so uh, it's the end of the season, and I made that walk around video and talked about what I wanted to do this year. So I'm going to walk around and show you what I actually did do. Um, I didn't get to do the gray water down here. I did finish the sauna, and next year I'll do the addition right here for the Arctic entry. But I did cut out this foundation and insulate it. And just around here, I cut out the whole foundation that was rotten. And I re-insulated it, and I put it in a new doorway and just some temporary steps. I uh, took the trailer and I framed a little gate around it. Underneath that tarp is uh, a bunch of a bunch of wood. I bought 52 fish tote lids that are insulated. They're hard plastic. I'm going to be building stuff with them. The other day at the dump, someone got rid of this uh, child's geodesic dome clay thing. So I might use that to make a little cool structure. And then one of my neighbors was getting rid of a bunch of handrails. He's a uh, steel handrails and stuff so there's a lot of it it's underneath the snow i got an ibc tote for the uh, gray water system uh for the bathroom the one thing i didn't get to finish which i was kind of bummed about is the outhouse this is a hole that the moose fell into um underneath here is a bunch of stone like the size of my fist and uh well i put the mesh around it and it started to backfill it when the guy dropped it off but then i realized i didn't have enough stone to do the whole fucking thing so i think uh I got a little lazy because I needed to find some rotten stumps or something to throw in there to fill the void because I'm not going to be able to get all of it in stone. And, well, I think I procrastinated because I'd rather do the real do the real deal rather than putting something that's going to rot 10 years down the road. I indeed finished building the yurt, well, to a degree. Um, my parents didn't get the, uh, the double doors that they wanted, so we just kind of left it open and I'm putting some stuff in there for next year for them and then I'm going to plywood it shut. Got this cool bike from the dump. Uh, the only thing that's wrong with it is the front brake is uh, just hanging there, but nothing I can't fix. This is the deck for the yurt. Uh, I had a thing with the yurt company um, and the Techno Metal Post people because the Techno Metal Post people suggested that we use less posts so that we could save money. So the guy redesigned it and he didn't communicate with the yurt people and they gave us a floor design with a lumber list for a floor that we're not going to be able to build because they wanted two by six floor joists two feet apart, but the girders were seven feet apart from each other. Our girders are up to 10, 11 feet uh, ish and two feet on center with two by sixes. That's not bueno, no, no bueno. And even uh, the girders themselves are undersized. So I had to go and sister them uh, to beef them up and just frame everything 16 on center. And unfortunately I went and I didn't, really think and i ordered all the wood ahead of the ahead of time according to their list and then when i got to building it i realized i should have either upsized the floor joists or uh, i'm gonna have to frame them on center and upsize other things but luckily i got more wood because i planned on doing my dormers for my house which didn't happen because of the weather so that's next year they got to take some of my wood and we got to get it done so i also trash picked uh two um, trampolines and I took the legs of them and there's a section and I there's a section I made a corral that kind of zigzags uh, and some mesh and I didn't get to it mainly because I can't concentrate on animals right now but next year we're gonna get goats and chickens and I'm gonna I'm gonna put up some uh, hardware wire and then put a fishing net over it um, keep out the predators and George's shack will be uh, turned into some animal houses I also planted a bunch of hascap, honeyberry bushes, currants, and a bunch of other stuff, which, um, and some cherry trees, and also some uh, cold hardy hazelnut. I built this greenhouse also out of birch using my uh, log furniture tool set. And it worked out. Right now there's a lot of snow up there. Every time I come in here to do something, I never get the chance to actually come in and inspect the roof because, you know, everyone else has to knock their stuff off. But, you know, maybe I should. I don't want it to collapse. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do. It's 20 degrees right now. Um, it's almost 4 p.m. The sun's going down. 
So I mentioned two trampolines. Well, the actual circle, the circular parts, I split it in half and took some birch and tied them together into a hoop house situation. I was waiting for one more I almost got so I could continue to add on and make a hoop house that's, you know, uh, 24 by uh, 16 and 12 feet tall. Um, and I made it so that I can drag it around and stuff. Make sure I gotta um, debark all that stuff and copper treat the bottom. I'm about to go to my neighbor's house and I also built this cistern room. I almost forgot. And this is all built with pallets. And I got a um, pickup truck camper, bed camper. Uh, I got that out of the dump. I used that. Mounted it up so that, well, I don't have to um, <coughs> you know, shovel in front of the door. Uh, all right. And then this is actually I'm having quite a problem here. My pumps inside, inside for the first time froze up, which doesn't make much sense to me because it is uh, 75 degrees in here. So it's definitely not frozen right here. Definitely not, but uh, when it goes through that wall, there's another wall and there's a gap. And I'm thinking that something outside, maybe this side, is getting air underneath the wall from outside. And that cavity on the inside is as cold as it is outside. So that hose is not getting heated from this diesel heater. It's a diesel car heater. And I got it running on a 12 volt battery inside. And I love this thing, it's amazing. But uh, so I think what I'm gonna have to do is split the uh, the outlet, have one part go and heat the, uh, the split port here and the hose that goes in this way. And then I'll have to split it and then run this ductwork into the little box that I have in the floor that's insulated where the pumps are. Oh, but this is the, uh, this is the cistern room. This is the pallets and all the scrap wood. And, um, we also got a propane dryer. I also, uh, upgraded my battery system to these 24 volt chin batteries, which are actually amazing, but, uh, they're not problem free. Um, this inverter, this controller doesn't have the presets to, uh, charge the LifePo 4 batteries. So next year I gotta get a new controller that has the presets to charge stuff like that. I had to go in here and do a custom charge setting to be able to pump that full of electricity. And there's a few things about these batteries that I'm not quite sure about. Um, another thing I did was rip out the insulation here and I replaced it with rock wool. Um, and then I kind of tightened up the gaps up there, um, just temporarily. I upgraded my entertainment. I got the really nice big flat screen TV for like a hundred bucks or 80 bucks or something. It came with an Amazon, uh, stick, got a sound bar. So we're living in modern times. I also uh, ta -da, did some stuff upstairs. I don't know if you'll notice, but there's no ladder here anymore. That's because I built these steps. Go up because that's where I want my bedroom. Up in the dorm rooms. Um, there's a grow tent over here. I also got one of these cheap weather station things that has four different channels. Like this is inside right now. That's outside in the mudroom. This is upstairs on the second floor. And this is in the cistern room. Uh, I don't know the accuracy. I had both two sensors next to each other and one was reading something. The other was reading something else. So, um, but it's a ballpark. I woke up, it said it was eight degrees. I believe it. I fixed this snow blower. Uh, the little flywheel in there was all chewed down and it wasn't making contact. And, uh, and then down here, uh, the handle, um, it was all messed up and broken. So I just welded a piece of angle iron in there and I actually just held it up in place and welded the entire thing to this plate. So, I mean, it's not coming off uh, any other side as well. You know, it's a shit weld. Uh, and this piece broke, this whole pipe, right where it was, uh, you know, manufactured and pressed on it, it broke. So I just filled that with weld. And uh, even though I lost the case under the snow, uh, the case still fits over here. I redid the flue because it rotted and I went to go clean the outside of it. Some creosote dripped down and I touched it and my finger just went right through the fucking joint. And that was uh, pretty interesting. And my neighbor was watching my house and they were feeding the fire to keep this crop alive. And I came back and uh, I was walking around with my flashlight and I look up and that pipe, that flue, the old one, was hanging down. And there's a big ass gap like this.